I want to share a little bit about my journey as a worship leader. Um, I love that a worship leader, it's, it's like, it's this crazy perfect storm because you have a creative and a leader married together. Um, how, how many of you would say you lean more on the creative side versus the leader side? And then how many are like, I'm a stronger leader and I have to like work for the creative side, yeah? It's sort of like in basketball, you're either right-handed or left-handed, but the great, the great basketball players, you watch Steph Curry, he can shoot with his left or right hand. Like he's learned to use his non-dominant hand to shoot with. For me, I would rather hide behind being an artist than being creative, right? But there's a leader inside of me, and over the last 20 years, through community, through family, mostly through my wife challenging me a little bit, the leader has woken up, and I've learned to dribble with my left hand. Does that make sense? I, I would rather lean on, I'm just creative, I'm just an artist. But there's a leader inside of me, and learning to marry my strength with my weakness is what I believe creates a great worship leader. My wife, on the other hand, she's this fiery, bold leader. And when we got married, she didn't even write music or sing. If you would have told me when me and Melissa got married in 2000 that one day we would lead worship together, I probably wouldn't believe you. Because she, she had this very shy, timid voice then. But she was this fiery leader. And so for her, switching over was learning how to be a creative and learning how to write. And she married those two. And that's why she's such a dynamic worship leader now. Does that make sense? And so you're going to be on this journey of learning how to um, marry your strength with your weakness. And so I want to go all the way back to 2005. Me and Melissa are about to, it was really me, she wasn't even writing music then, but we're about to record our first album. And the way our first, my first five years of leading worship, the way I led worship is we'd never made set list. We just, it was just like, let's just see what happens. There was no planning. Like the band would know a couple of the songs and we would just, it was just free flow for like an hour and a half. And we had some really amazing moments, uh, but it's not the best plan to record an album that way. And we had, we had gone in to record this album. It was a live conference. Um, we were recording it at, uh, we were in our late twenties. Uh, the budget was like 60 grand to build a studio, host a conference, and record an album. And the day the conference started, everything had been paid for. It was the craziest faith journey me and my wife had taken up to that point. And one of our heroes in the faith, a man named Graham Cook, uh, came in, and we asked him to be like a Samuel over the conference, like Samuel was to David, to be this like prophetic voice to help guide and to lead us. Uh, during the conference, not just to be a conference speaker, but to be a father on the stage with us. And so the first night of the conference, it was really good. We didn't really have a set list. It was just like free flow. We're like going for it. And we were on our way home that night, me and Graham are in the car. And he's like, how do you think it went tonight? I was like, I think it was good. He's like, and, and just like a father does, uh, he just came and he's like, I think there's a better way. And he said, he said this phrase to me. He said, you know, I love the spontaneous moments that you guys have. He said, but true spontaneity is the reward of preparation. True spontaneity is the reward of preparation. And, and at that point, I had idolized spontaneity. I had thought success is when you have spontaneous moments. And he's like, what if tomorrow night we actually go ahead and ask God what he wants to do and we make a plan and we create I was so afraid of making set lists because I thought like, man, if we make a set list, then we're not really following God, right? He's like, but what if we stop ahead of time and say, Father, what are you doing? What do you want to do tonight? And then we make a plan. And then we have spontaneous moments because spontaneity is the reward of preparation. And so we, the Saturday night was like, if you compare the Saturday and Friday night, it was just completely different. And it was, Graham just stepped in and he would, if you've ever heard the last track on the Awakening album, he loves you because he loves you because he loves you. Any of you guys ever heard of that? A couple of people got some, got some old school fans in the room. Um, there's a track at the end of our album called The Awakening, and Graham shares this prophetic word at the end. It's just a love bomb from heaven, from the Father's heart. And that was in between one of the songs. And so we created this set list, and Graham made notes for the whole night, and he would share these words in between songs. 
And we started at 30,000 feet that night, and we just went higher and higher and higher. We had spent like, wasted two hours just worshiping that night and just went higher and had these incredible spontaneous moments. And so for, since, since then, me and Melissa have been cultivating this value that spontaneity is the reward of preparation. And I think it takes about a decade in the kingdom to really grow something. Um, like to grow something that will have fruitfulness for generations. My friend Morgan Snyder says, live in the day, but measure in the decade. Live in the day, but measure in the decade. And so for the, about the last decade, we've been practicing that, of learning how to make a plan with the Father, but in the plan, being spontaneous with Him. So fast forward, 2016. Um, have you guys heard the the Moments album that Bethel released two years ago. There's a track on the Moments album called Like a Flood, uh, and it's our piano player, Molly Skaggs. Um, you guys experienced that really powerful moment. You can look it up on the iTunes or the YouTubes later if you haven't. Um, and it's just this musical moment that happened during Worship You in 2016. And a quick backstory on that. So I'm up early that morning. I know we're leading worship. I'm just sitting with the Father, and I'm asking this beautiful question that I've learned to ask him. Father, what do you want to do today? And here's the thing about having conversations with God is sometimes it's like the hobbits having a conversation with the ants, you know? It takes a long time sometimes for God to answer you. And he didn't say anything for like the first hour. I'm finishing my coffee. I'm kind of done, and I'm like, well, he didn't really say anything, so we'll just see what happens. And as I'm like finishing my quiet time, all of a sudden I feel the Father's voice. He said, my glory is going to come this morning. He said, just don't get in the way of it. I'm like, yes, sir, Dad. (laughs) Like I felt like the beautiful fear of the Lord, like his glory is coming. And I I just sat back down. I was like, okay, like heart, be ready for the glory. It's coming. And I had that picture. There's a picture of when David is bringing the ark of God's presence the first time into Jerusalem. And they're bringing the ark in, and they have it on this ox cart. And there's this moment, like one of the wheels comes off, and this guy tries to prop up the glory with his own strength. And he, he, he gets killed right there. Like, just, I mean, that's a crazy worship service, right? <laughs> Imagine, like, last night if, like, Corey just died in the middle of the set because <laughs> he tries to just hold up the glory, and boom, he's dead. Like, so, I mean, that was, like, the worship set they had. And David learns this thing that you, you can't get in the way of the glory and hold it up with human strength. And so I just go into that worship set with just my hands open like, okay, when's it going to happen? I'm just looking. And we have our set list. We have a great set list for that morning. And Melissa's finishing Catch the Wind. And after Catch the Wind, we're supposed to go into one of my songs. And as Melissa comes down from Catch the Wind, I just, I feel it in the room. And I just step back from my mic And I'm like, I'm not moving right now because I know like God's about, I'm just going to wait just a few more minutes. And as soon as Molly sees me step back, she knows, okay, I have permission. And then Molly just began to just, something just came through on Molly's piano. If I had not asked the father that morning, I could have just, just plowed through my set list and missed that moment with the Lord. Does that make sense? So I love that moment um, because It was like, you can watch the video, but what starts happening out here, it's like the people don't need us anymore. Uh, And those are my favorite moments as a leader, when you work yourself out of a job. Our favorite moments as a worship leader are when you guys start singing the song louder than we've been singing. When we stop singing the words on the screen and we start singing the words that are written on our hearts. I, I, I write songs so you can start singing your song. 